that how many were not in the first service? Raise your hand. Okay, a lot of people. A lot, most of the people were not here in the first service. And I asked a question to those that were here this morning. How many knew, because of Facebook or maybe Pastor has told you, that uh, I went through a health crisis the last few months starting in April? How many, how many knew about that? Okay, a couple of you knew. Well, listen, I want to thank those that knew and have been praying for us. And then uh, some of you may have been praying because Pastor David may have mentioned it. But I want to thank everyone that's prayed for us because those, how many know the scripture says that the, 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 the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. And boy, I tell you, those prayers got me back on the road. Amen. Got me back up. And amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Give him a hand clap. We used to come to California every month to minister and to do the monthly minister's luncheon. But we haven't been here in 132 days because we were going through that situation. But the Lord has us back. This is, imagine, this is the first church we're preaching at since being back on the road. So we want to thank Pastor David, amen, for uh, entrusting us to come and minister while he was going to be away. And, and Pastor Louie, I want to thank Pastor Louie and everybody that's been helping us. You know what, you guys really are, you know, diligent. Amen. You have a ministry of excellence. We appreciate that. Yeah. Amen. Give yourselves a hand clap. Amen. Yeah. So, amen. We're glad to be here. And we have a message as Pastor Louis was sharing. The Lord has laid us on our heart. And I believe, I believe it's, it's the right word for this congregation. I believe it's a word that we need to hear. Because sometimes... Uh, we're walking with the Lord and something will come that we don't expect and uh, you know what it let me put it in, 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 in raw words it can shake us to our core it can shake our even shake our faith come on what, what, what I went through these last few months you know uh, it, it, it really shook me to my core and I had no choice but to seek, seek God like I had never sought him before. Amen. Amen. Because I had to get a hold of him. I had to hold on to him for dear life. Come on. Amen. Amen. Because you know what? If not, I would have just went down in despair. Would have went down. Amen. You know, just in discouragement. But, you know, I turned to God and I said, Lord. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, I spent a lot of time praying and worshiping and seeking the Lord. But you know what? We have to remain in faith. Amen. Remain in faith. Come on. Amen. Stay in faith. Amen. I heard somebody say a long time ago, well, you know, even if, you, if you're if you sick and they pray for you and they believe God for you and you die, they say, well, die in faith. Come on now. Die in faith, amen. Look at somebody tell them, die in faith. Amen, you know, but you got to remain in faith to the very end. And you know, there's a scripture in Hebrews 10, 35, uh, that, and it's a scripture that you've heard before, but I'm reading it from another translation, a modern translation, and it says, do not let this happy trust in the Lord die away. Come on, amen. Don't let your trust in the Lord die away. And then, uh, or, or the King James says, cast not away there for your confidence. But I like this one because it said, do not let this happy trust of the Lord die away no matter what happens. Come on, no matter what. Say, no matter what. Look at somebody and tell them, no matter what. No matter what, keep trusting in God. Come on. Amen. And then it says, Remember your reward. Yeah. Woo, I'm always getting emails from uh, uh, Walgreens. You have a rewards uh, points. Amen. Come on. How many get those kinds of things? You have reward points. And now that we started staying at the, this is the first time staying over there at the Fairfield, which is a Marriott, you know, a uh, chain. And, uh, you know, I got on, on, on board with their, with their rewards program. Come on. And they're starting to bombard me with, 
emails now about different rewards that you can get. But how many know faith has a reward? Come on. I said faith has a reward. Amen. So don't 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 cast away your confidence. Uh, amen. Don't stop trusting in the Lord because there's a recompense coming after. And you know, I, I went and I said, you know, what was what another way to say recompense? And so I like to go to the synonyms. I go Google. I say synonym for recompense. How many know what a synonym is? Come on, a synonym is another way to say something. Say, say something that the word means, amen. And you know, I, I, I looked at it, I, I, I read it, and it said, a recompense, it's a compensation or reward given for loss or harm suffered or an effort made. Come on. Amen. I'm going to read that one more time. Compensation or reward given for loss or harm suffered. Or an effort made. Sister said it. It's a payback. It's a payback. It's a reimbursement. Amen. You know what? No matter what you're going through. No matter what you've lost. Uh, no matter, amen, you know what you've suffered. No matter what harm has come to you. Amen. Because you've been trusting in God. God says, amen, there's a payback coming. There's a reward coming. There's a recompense coming. Amen. How many believe that? Well, then give the Lord a hand praise again. Amen. Let him know. Amen. That you're trusting in him. Now, I want to give you uh, an example of somebody who kept in faith, no matter, though it seemed impossible what God told him to do, no matter it didn't make sense, uh, it didn't matter that he couldn't see what God was talking about, but he kept walking by faith. That's what we have to do. Many, many times. We have to keep on keeping on. Amen. I said keep on keeping on. Amen. Keep on building. Uh, keep on moving forward. Keep advancing. Uh, amen. You know what? That's what I'm talking about today. So I want to go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. And I, wa I want to talk about Noah today. Amen. As a matter of fact, this message is called keep on building, Noah. Keep on building, Noah. Come on, how many know he had to keep on building, amen, even though he was doing it by faith. Because Hebrews 11, 7, and this is the message uh, Bible translation. It says, by faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. Come on. He was warned about something he couldn't see. And acted on what he was told. The result, his family was saved. His family was saved. How many know that was his reward? Come on, that was his reward. And, and, and then it goes on to say, And his act of faith drew a sharp line between the evil of the unbelieving world and the rightness of the believing world. And as a result, Noah became intimate with God. How many know there's an unbelieving world? Yes. Yes. And then there's the believing world that we live in. Because we're believers in God. And the unbelieving world, they, they, they don't, they, they, they don't uh, have the Lord to turn to. When they go through a crisis, when they have a problem... And they turn to other things, drugs, alcohol, money, whatever. But we are believers in God. Amen. Amen. We are believers. And you know, our text here in the 11th chapter of Hebrews is, uh, you know, affectionately referred to as the Hall of Fame of Faith. How many have ever heard of that? The Hall of Fame of Faith. Amen. We know in the sports world, uh, I was watching, you know, here, it was in July, I think, or no, it was in August. The Hall of Fame of Faith of Football. Or they don't call it the Hall of Fame of Faith, but they call it the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame. How, how many saw a little bit of that, sports fans out there? How many saw a little bit of those ceremonies? And football players get inducted into that Hall of Fame. And it's a great honor. 
in the football world, a great honor. They make a big deal. Of, they even make a, 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 a bus or, or, or like a little statue of the head of the football player that's getting inducted because that's to memorialize their accomplishment. This is what God did here in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. He memorialized the exploits, come on, of these heroes of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and we're talking about faith, so we have to refer to Hebrews 11.1. 1. It gives the definition of faith. And it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence. Somebody say evidence. evidence. The evidence of things not seen. Wow. Think about that a little bit. Amen. The evidence of things not seen. But I tell you, God's people are going to need faith to live in this difficult world that we're in. Come on. It takes faith. Amen. To be able to live, amen, being surrounded by evil. How many know we're surrounded by evil? Amen. But, you know, we, we don't really think about it all the time because, you know, we're walking in faith. We're, we're walking, believing God has a hedge of protection around us. Amen. Amen. You know, every time, you know, I even when we go to bed at night, Christine and I pray. One of the things we pray, Lord, watch over us Amen. as we sleep. Amen. Protect us. Amen. When we go out on the road, Amen. Amen, as we're starting on our way, we pray in the car, Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you that you said your word. Uh, the angels of the Lord and camp around about those who fear you. But we are surrounded by evil. The enemy, you know what? He has plans and strategies and devices that he wants to uh, uh, take us down. That's why Paul said, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. Don't be ignorant of his strategies. But I'm so glad Jesus said, but the gates of hell shall not prevail, come on, against the church. The strategies, the wiles, uh, amen, shall not prevail against us. Amen. But that's why we need faith. Doesn't the, the, the Bible in Hebrew, Ephesians 6 talk about the shield of faith? The shield of faith will do what? Will do what? Will do what? Extinguish and quench Every fiery dart of the enemy. Yes. Amen. Come on. It doesn't matter what he does. We got the shield of faith. Boom. Come on. Fires the dart here. Boom. Come on now. Amen. He tries something. Shield of faith. Come on. Amen. But we have to remain in faith. Even though. Amen. Those fiery darts come. And so. Faith. Is required. In a life which things are hoped for, but not yet seen or possessed. How many besides me have some things that you're believing for, but you haven't really possessed them yet? Come on. You haven't really, amen, seen them fulfilled in your life yet. But that's why we need faith. Come on. Maybe some of you are believing for family members to be saved. Maybe some of you are believing for you a new dwelling place, a new house. Uh, amen. Maybe some of you are believing, amen, for a healing. Come on, how many are with me? So, we hope for power during times of weakness. We hope for peace in the midst of the storm. Come on, in the midst of turmoil and chaos. We hope for joy. Amen. Come on, during those times of sorrow. But faith is believing God's word. Come on. In order to lay hold of those things that, that are promised uh, and make them real in our lives. We're talking about Noah, though, this morning. We want to look at Hebrews eleven seven 7 and look at these principles of faith. Faith, first point, is required... To obey God when things don't make sense. 
Come on. Sometimes we go through some things. Sometimes God asks us to do some things that in the natural, they don't make sense. But you know what? We're not led by our senses. I said, we're not led by our senses. Come on, you start being led by your senses. Well, I tell you, you're going to be up one day, down the next day. Amen. You're going to be over here, over there. Come on. But we are not led by our senses. Uh, we're led by the Spirit of God. But you see, faith is necessary to obey God when things don't make sense. Like Noah, the example is right there. He built a ship in the middle of dry land. <laughs> Why do you need a ship where there's no water around? As a matter of fact, he built that ship and the closest body of water was 500 miles away from where he was. Come on. Amen. So he had to build that ship by faith. It didn't make sense. God, why do you want me to build a ship here? There's no water around. But you think about the people in the Bible and stories in the Bible. Amen. Where God asks people to do things that it makes sense. How about David going out to fight an almost 10 foot giant who had 600 pounds of armor who was notorious, amen, for being a, a man killer, amen. He was a killing machine. He actually was a walking tank. Come on, 600, miles of, uh, 600 pounds of armor. He had a, another guy carry a shield for him. Come on, a walking tank. And God sends David out there to take on this dude with a slingshot. Come on. And five stones. Yeah. Come on. Five smooth stones. You know why he had five stones? Because the giant had, amen, four other brothers. Come on now. Or some say four other children. Amen. So you know what, David? I'm going to take them all out. I'm going to take them all out. Come on now. Amen. I'm going to get rid of these dudes. Come on now. Amen. They're not going to torment us anymore. Come on. God's given you the weapons necessary. Amen. To take the enemy out. Come on. Come on. But it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. But we're not led by our senses. And you know what happened? He took them out. Come on. Amen. He took them out. Hallelujah. So, listen. The Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because it says there in Hebrews eleven seven that Noah was warned about something that he could not see. He couldn't see this flood that God warned him was coming. He couldn't see. Amen. You know what? The, the, the water. There was no water anywhere around. But you know what? Even though he couldn't see it, he still obeyed God. He was warned because he, he was warned about something he could not see. But you know, the, that's why the scripture says, we walk by faith. We're walking by faith and not by sight. Come on. Amen. We're walking by faith and not by sight. So listen, just because you can't see it, just because you can't hear it or feel it, amen. Amen. Keep walking by faith. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them, keep walking by faith. Come on, tell them. Keep walking by faith. Don't be a sense-led believer. Some people are led by their senses, even though they're saved. They, they're still led by their senses. They're still, they're, they're, another way of putting it, they're still led by their emotions. Uh -oh. oh, I don't feel good today. I can't go to church. I, I don't feel, I, you know, come on. Don't be led by your senses. Don't be led by your emotions. Ooh, if you're led by your emotions, I'll tell you, you're going to be up one day, down the next day. You're going to be, you know what, sideways. You're going to be over here, amen, over there. Listen, up and down like a yo-yo. Come on. I, I, I'm going to know that sometimes we can be yo-yo Christians. Come on. But don't be led by your senses. Don't be led by your emotions. And, and you know, another translation of, of 2 Corinthians 5, 7, where it says we walk by faith, it says, it's what we trust in but don't see that keeps us going. Amen. 
It's what we trust in. Well, what are we trusting in, ladies and gentlemen? I said, what are we trusting in? Say it. What are we trusting in? It's what we trust in but don't see. That's what keeps us going. You know, a lady by the name of Corey Tinboom. How many have ever heard of Corey Tinboom? You know, she said something like this. She said, um, faith is the radar that sees through the fog. How many have ever been in a fog bank? I remember a long time ago. I was with my mom. I was, you know, in maybe in elementary school. We were driving with my mom. And my mom always had a new car. My mom, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> she always had to have a new car. Amen. And one day we were in her new car, driving down Pioneer Boulevard, uh, over there, getting uh, getting near, how many remember the, the what was it, the, the, the factory that made the potato chips and all that? I remember that over there. Bell Brand. I remember the Bell Brand factory over there. Uh, uh, by the railroad tracks. We were right there and, and the fog bank had rolled in and we couldn't see. And my mom, you know, she was telling me, Mijo, you know, uh, uh, get out of the car and, and you know, <laughs> I'll tell you, and help me guide you. Uh, it was bad, but you know what Corey Timboom said? Faith is the radar that sees through the fog. Because sometimes, amen, we get in situations where we can't see what's going, we don't know where we're going. We're in the dark. Yeah. Come on, we're in the dark. But listen, amen, that's why, amen, faith is required to obey God when things don't make sense. Listen, the second point. Faith requires obedience. Yes. If you're going to walk in faith, you're going to have to be obedient to what God told you to do. That, that, that's, what, that's what Noah did. He acted, Hebrews 11, 7 says, he acted on what he was told. Even though it didn't make sense, even though it seemed impossible, even though he couldn't see the flood that was God warned him about, he acted on what he was told. Amen. Build a ship, build a ship, build a ship. Come on, Noah kept on building even though things didn't make sense, even though it seemed impossible, even though he couldn't see what was coming, he kept on building. Look at somebody today and tell him, keep on building. Come on, tell him, keep on building. <laughs> and it says that he acted on what he was told. Well, who told him? Say it. Who told him? God told him. And that's why faith requires obedience. We need to act on what God has said. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. How many besides me like bread? I love bread. When I go to those restaurants where they give you the bread free, like Olive Garden. Huh? I mean, like go Olive Garden have those those bread, special breads. My wife found out those breads are made specially in a bakery in, uh, Illinois. in Illinois. Did you know that? No. Yeah. Specially made for Olive Garden, a bakery in Illinois. And when we go like to restaurants like that, I tell them, bring us the bread and keep it coming. <laughs> Come on. I tell them right up front, keep it coming, man. Because I'm going to eat me some bread. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? By what? Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We need to feed on the word. Why? Because faith cometh. Faith cometh. Faith cometh. Come on. Amen. By watching Fox News. <laughs> no way. You ain't got enough faith there. <laughs> faith cometh by hearing. Yes. And hearing what? By the word of God. 
That's how faith comes. So much. So let me ask you a question. How much word are you hearing? When we got saved back in the day, brother, remember the faith movement? Come on, word of faith. Come on. Puro word of God. Puro palabra de Dios, man. Amen. We were. They used to call. You heard of a tapeworm? We were bookworms. Come on. Amen. We were. We were. We were people that had the. And back in those days, we had the Walkman cassettes. Now you guys have iPods and all that fancy stuff. Back then, we were primitive. Come on. We had. We had the Walkman cassettes with the headphones and the cassettes with the Word of God, the preaching on there. Kenneth Copeland, yes. Kenneth Hagen, yes. Charles Caps, yes. Jerry Seville. Remember those days, brother? Yes. Amen. Always hearing the word. Because faith cometh by hearing. Come on. And hearing by the word of God. And now today you have so much more. So much more. Amen. Ways that you can hear the word of God now. Come on. YouTube? Woo, forget about it. You go go on YouTube, man, and find tons of preachers. And you gotta be careful what you hear on there, though. You know, we listen to this guy a lot, and and one of his slogans is teaching that you can trust. I like that because you can't trust all teaching now. The internet that's dangerous, but you have to be discerning. You have to have a foundation of the Word of God in you, so you know stuff that is, uh, you know, in error. That's stuff that is not biblical. That's why you need a foundation, amen, of sound teaching. That's why I like these classes. You need to come to the classes. Amen. And get those foundations of faith in you so that you can recognize false teachings. But faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And boy, back in those days, we were always hearing the word. Always hearing the word. Always in the word. Always in the word. Amen. That's the way we need to be. Amen. Today. Come on. Not just we need to come to church to hear the word. But, you know, at the home. Amen. Hearing the word of God. Reading the Bible to yourself. Studying the Bible. Hearing teachings. Hearing, 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 you know, different programs that are bringing you the word of God. We have regular times now. Christina and I. Man, that's what we're doing in the morning. We're eating breakfast and we're hearing the word. We're seeing the word. Amen. If we can't watch it on TV, we're hearing it, amen, through the iPhone, amen, and amplifying it and hearing the word. Come on. Yeah. Listen, the third point of my message is faith is required to do the impossible. Sometimes we're in some situations where it seems impossible. Amen. It seems impossible that we're ever going to get out of that situation. Amen. It seems impossible that there's ever going to come a change in that circumstance. It seems impossible, amen, that that prayer is going to be answered. It seems impossible that we're going to see that miracle. Amen. That's why the Bible says the things that are impossible with men are possible with God. Come on. Amen. That's why we need faith. Amen. Faith is required to do the impossible. Think about what God asked Noah to do. Build a ship. Mm. And it wasn't no little tiny boat. You look in Genesis 6. We're not going to turn there, but I'm going to give you the reference. Genesis 6, verses 14 through 16, we see what God told Noah to do. He told Noah, build a ship and make it 450 feet long. One of these contractors told me, you know how, how, how big that is? He says it's equivalent to a 45-story building. And then he told Noah, build a ship, make it 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Massive ship. That's why some say it took him 120 years to do it. 120 years. Wow. Come on. Talk about long suffering. Come on. Talk about perseverance. Talk about endurance. Some of us can't even wait 120 minutes. Come on. 120 years. 
And then he told him, build a roof for it and put a window on the top. That doesn't make sense. Well, you put a window on the top. You want to put a window in the front, on the sides, so you can see what's going on. So you can see where you know God says, put that window right on the top. And then he said, put one door on the side of the ship. There was only one way in to the ark. Hasn't changed, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there's still only one way into the ark. I said, there's still only one way into the ark. Come on, the ark is Jesus. Come on, there's only one way. He is the way. Come on, he is the way. Don't let all these modern preachers try and confuse you. There's some people that are preaching, so-called Christians, that are preaching, you know what, there's different ways to get to heaven. That Jesus is not the only way. You could get there but through Buddha. You could get there through Allah. You could get, come on. No, there's still only one way. Look at somebody and tell them there's only one way. There's only one way. There's only one way. His name is Jesus. Come on. Didn't he say that? He said, I am the way. I am the way. Come on. He even said he was the door. Come on. Well, I could go on and on with that. But you know, the point is, faith was required to do what God had asked Noah to do because it was an impossible thing. And you know, the scripture doesn't really indicate who helped Noah build the ark. Now, I think that's significant. And I'm going to tell you why in just a moment. But think about it. The scripture does not say who helped Noah build the ark. Now, did he do it alone? Probably not. But the significance in the fact that the scripture does not mention who helped him, I, I believe it, 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 it's important because it, it, it really says to us that faith requires that we do what God calls us to do, even if it means we do it alone. You're not always going to have your buddy from church there with you. <laughs> During your difficult times. Not always going to have Pastor David around. Or Pastor Louis around. Come on. When you, amen, are in a difficult situation. You're going to have to believe God for yourself. You're going to have to trust God for yourself. You're going to have to encourage yourself in the Lord. Come on. Amen. Sometimes people, well, you know, if I just had somebody to help me, you know, do this, or if I just had somebody to go with me, listen, you wait around for somebody, amen, to help you obey God, you're never going to get the job done. When I was a new Christian, I was testifying in the first service. When I was a new Christian, amen. Oh, it's almost time to stop. Wow. Well, listen, let me go on. Because, uh, listen, sometimes it's going to mean that, you know, you're going to have to do it alone. Stop making excuses why you can't obey God. Yeah. And faith requires that you keep your focus on God. Yeah. That's why the window at the top, don't lose focus. The Bible says, let us run with endurance and active persistence. The race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus. Yeah who is the author and perfecter of faith, the one who brings our faith to maturity. Amen. Don't look at somebody and tell them, don't tell them, don't lose your focus. Don't lose your focus. Amen. Don't lose your focus. And faith, faith requires a reward. What was Noah's reward? The result is family was saved. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6 says, faith is a rewarder. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He rewards those who diligently seek him. You know what diligence diligently is talking about? To seek after carefully. To seek after carefully. Amen. To 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 search out. You have to be a diligent seeker. That's the ones that God rewards. God doesn't reward casual seekers, but diligent seekers. That's why I opened up with. Do not let this happy trust in the Lord die away no matter what happens. Remember your reward. Look at somebody and tell them, remember your reward. Look at somebody and tell them, remember your 
reward. Stay in faith, church. And listen, as a church body, I know you as a people have had promises. Promises given to this church about what God had in store for you. And you say, well, you know what? I heard Dave, Pastor David talking about this and talking about Pastor Louie and, and people have come here and prophesied and said God had greater things for you and had a building for you and had this for you. And, and, and you might say, well, we haven't seen it yet. Hey, that doesn't mean anything. Amen. Right. Like, no, you have, may not have seen it yet, but it's coming. Amen. Amen. And you stay in faith. Uh, amen. You don't stop believing. Uh, amen. Don't go into doubt. Go, don't go on into unbelief. Amen. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet and join somebody by the hand right there next to you. And let's pray. Father, we just thank you today, Lord, that you promised a reward for those who diligently seek you.